Good evening, everybody. Um, we're welcome to the introductory course to Hasidic thought. Uh, as you will see from the introductory page over here, um, which I'll get to in a second, it lays out what the course is going to be about. There'll be a number of different lectures in each of these topics. We'll see exactly how it works out. But uh, before uh, we actually st start teaching, I would like to... Um, say that the shiur is dedicated to the Fur Shlema Umalea, the complete and, uh, and, and uh, recovery and health of Yaakov Chaim Moshe ben Freida. Yaakov Chaim Moshe ben Freida may have a Rufur Shlema and Kroiva and Malea. Okay, um, so we, in our previous sort of introduction to the introduction, we discussed various um, approaches to uh, Hasidus, a sort of an introduction to Hasidus altogether. And one of the main points that we, um, that we covered over there was the idea that there are two approaches to Kabbalah Hasidus. There are two approaches to Kabbalah Hasidus. One approach is the approach of the Arizal, an approach of classical Kabbalah, essentially, classical Kabbalah, which takes in Yonim, which are very, very, very extremely high in Yonim, and tries to put them into categories of human thought. In other words, to be mulbish, to close ideas, uh, abstract ideas, into things that we're somewhat familiar with. And therefore, you'll find a lot of Kabbalah has to deal with understanding um, for, for example, Adam Kadmon, right? what Adam Kadmon is about, his ears and his eyes and his nose and the mouth and the eye, the lights that come out of them and so on and so forth. There's all human images, but in order to be able to explain certain things to you in Kabbalah. So that's one approach. Then you get the approach of Hasidus, the approach of the Baal Shem Tov. The approach of the Baal Shem Tov was to look at things that we're familiar with and to be mafshit, to strip away the human aspects of it, or the uh, physical aspects of, of the thing, in order to get to the core, to the main idea. So we're going to be following the sheet of the Baal Shem Tov primarily, although we will look at times at the, you know, certain things from the Arizal and various other places. But that's primarily the idea that we're, uh, that we're looking at. Another idea that we, that we spoke about in previous uh, classes was that there was a stage of development of uh, Kabbalah from the time of the Zohar until the Ramak, and then from the Ramak to the Arizal, and then from the Arizal to the Baal Shem Tov. Three different stages. The first stage of Kabbalah examined the whole concept of Hishtal Shalut. Hishtal Shalut being the chaining down of the worlds. In other words, the development, so to speak, of the worlds. You might call it the devolution of the worlds. Yeah? From a higher state to a lower state, from before the Tzimtzum, although the Ramak himself did not speak about the Tzimtzum, but from very highest levels to the lowest levels and how each level is connected to the, to the next level, that's called Hishtal Shalut from the world, Shal Shelet, a, a chain. Right? Okay. That was the right, a chain. So the, each, each link is connected to the next, uh, next link. That was uh, the Ramak. Along comes the Arizal, and he looks not at the developmental ideas, but he looks at rather, he's much more interested in, although he incorporates the developmental ideas, he's much more interested in the interactive components of things that are found primarily in the Zohar. The interactive components means, in technical jargon, the interactive components means the Yehudim and Zivugim of the Partsufim. Right? Partsufim are spheros, are classes of spheros, and how they interact with each other. So he's interested much more in the interaction rather than in the development. Are we allowed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And when you say development, you are specifically referring to the Shtalshulus. Yeah. Of yes, yes, yes. So development is the Shtalshulus. And he's interested more, thank you very much, he's interested more in the idea of the interaction, interac interactive um, 
components as of... As they come down or at a certain stage? At, at different stages, at all different stages. Along comes the Baal Shem Tov, and he's interested in something completely different. He's interested in what's called Hashra'a. Hashra'a can mean two things. On the one hand, it means the dwelling of godliness upon each particular thing. In other words, how this thing is connected, not to which sphere it's connected, but how it's connected to Hashem. Right? How it's connected to what Hashem wants, Hashem's Chokhmah and Hashem's Ratzon, is the wisdom and will of Hashem. Right? That is called um, uh, Hashra'a. Yeah, from the, the word Shoreh, to, 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 to dwell upon. At the same time, yeah, from the word Shoreh, at the same time, Hashra'a also means inspiration. Right? That the Torah of the Baal Shem Tov inspires the person to go out of himself and to ascend to a higher spiritual level. That's, that's the concept of inspiration. And as we said before, that's the sheet of the Baal Shem Tov, is to go from what you know to abstract, strip away to a higher level. So we'll find that the Torah of the Baal Shem Tov, that's what it's doing. Going from what you know to beyond what you know. And as the, that, uh, that um, uh, sikha from the Rebbe Rashab, that's this whole concept from the Rebbe Rashab, that sikha from the Rebbe Rashab and Torah Sholem, so he explains that the concept of Kabbalah clothing things within human categories in order to understand them has its dangers because you can misunderstand and you can attribute things to godliness which don't which aren't there. Right? Whereas the Shita the Baal Shem Tov is much less dangerous because all you're doing is you're taking from what you know and you're stripping away. And therefore you can get to much higher levels, number one. And number two, it doesn't have the dangers of, uh, that you find in, uh, in Kabbalistic inyonim, which anyway, most Kabbalists are very careful to avoid, right? But there is such a danger, yeah. Can you give us a good example of stripping away? In other words, taking some Indian that has to do in this Funny. world and basically stripping it away until you see the source of it in the higher world. Yeah, okay, yeah. So, <clears throat> the fundamental puzzle, and we're going to look at this later on, is the fundamental pasuk of that idea is mi besari echze eloka from my flesh I see God. In other words, the fact that I find that I have a uh, let's say a beating heart, right? So why 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 does the heart beat in the first place? Like why? we know that it's to move the blood around and so on and so forth. But what does that mean? Beruchnius, right? So that's if you if you study uh, Chabad Hasidus and maybe other Hasidus as well, Kamarna maybe and various others you'll find that the whole concept of the beating of the heart is uh, an instance of the idea of Ratzo Veshov. Right? Ratzo Veshov means Ratzo is going up and coming down. It's part of the Merkava uh, experience that Yecheskel spoke about when he saw the Merkava. In other words, he saw divinity, he saw godliness, the vehicle for godliness in a higher world, in the world of Yetzirah, in fact. Right. So he says there, Vahachayot, the animals that were pulling the Merkava, Ratzova Shov, they were running up and they were jump and coming down again, jumping up and coming down, jumping up to a higher level and coming back down again, Ratzova Shov, right? So, um, this idea of Ratzova Shov, therefore, is um, explained in, uh, it's explained in Hasidus that that's what causes your heartbeat, this whole concept of Ratzova Shov, right? Causes, that's, that's, what causes the heartbeat and the blood to pump around and so on and so forth. But the idea is, Ratzo is to get to a higher spiritual level and then come back into the world. And higher spiritual level, come back into the world. And what causes the Ratzo Vashov? What's called Mati Velomati. Mati Velomati is when the highest levels of Elokus reach down and retract. That reaching down causes the Shov, right? When, when, when it's retracted, that causes the Ratzo. Yeah, because we want to get up to Elokus, so to speak, right? I mean, I'm pointing directions, obviously that's... Yeah, okay. So that would be an example of uh, how Hasidus looks at things. You look at it from your, from your heartbeat and you start to understand things on a much higher level. Ratzo Vashov and then Moti Velomoti. And Moti Velomoti is a concept that's, that's explained in Arizo, right? But you explain it from a different point of view. From what you know rather than from what you don't know. Right? Okay, so... But how can you... Understand based on understanding how heart works, how 
Okay, so there's methods of, uh, of, of, of explanation. Usually that has to come from uh, someone like, a, you know, come from a Rebbe, right, who, who will explain to you what this connection is. Um, but in your own Hidbonanut, in your own contemplation, meditation, etc., you could come to these understandings as well. But usually it's based on revealed Torahs which come from, uh, from the Rebbe. Now, <coughs> What you have in front of you, this introductory course, uh, which if anyone is watching this on um, uh, on the YouTube channel or whatever it'll be, um, it is it's certainly if, if, as soon as you sign up, I'll send you a copy of the uh, of the material. The introductory course. Uh, there's just a, a brief overview page, and then there is a um, a page of Makoyros. Right of uh, or several pages of Macquarie's of sources of actual texts which we will look at and explain from the point of view of uh, Chabad Hasidus primarily. Um, okay, so yeah, if you have a look at the first page, the introductory course the overview. This introductory course to Hasidic teachings is divided into six classes, and the truth is it's not really six classes. It might be more than six classes. It's only six six topics would be a better. Uh, covering six primary topics in Hasidic thought. No prerequisites are required. You know, in other words, you don't have to have any background. I'll explain them all. So let's just have a look at, just briefly, before we explain them, we'll have a look at the first one. is on the Posuk, Ein Oid Milvadoi. Right? There's no one or nothing besides him, besides Hashem. So the question we're going to ask, if that's the case, how did we get to be here and are we real? Do we exist? Or do we not exist? Maybe we don't exist, right? If Einoid Milvadoi, we take that literally, maybe we're not here, right? So we have to explain how it is that whether we are here, first of all, or not. And secondly, if we are here, what's the meaning of our existence? And how does it happen? How does it come about? So there's a very big part of that lesson is going to be about the Tzimtzum and so on and so forth. Like, and that, that explains a lot of that, uh, that issue. Just look briefly at number two. We'll go back to number one in a minute. Uh, number two, Hashem uh, Elokeinu Hashem Echad, what we say in Shema, the union of uh, the Achdus of Hashem, right? There's a difference between saying Ein Oid Mil Vadoi and Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad. We have to understand what the difference is. One is called Yehudi Law, one is called Yehudi Tator, or one is called Ein Oid Mil and the other one is called Yehudi Law, and then Baruch Shank Void Malchustoi Yehudi Tator. We don't have to get into all of that now because that'll be in the in the, in the second uh, topic that we look at. The third topic, Nitava Hakadosh Baruch Hu Lizu Zedir Betachtoinim, Hakadosh Baruch Hu wanted a dwelling place in the lower world. In other words, the purpose of creation. What did he create a world for? What did he need it for? Right? Did he really need such a world? Did he need us to be here? And so on. The fourth topic will be Anoich Hashem Elokecha. In other words, God's relationship to man. I am Lord your God. What is God's relationship to man? When he says Anoich Hashem Elokecha, what do you mean by this? What is the purpose of Torah? Etc. And we will discuss that. The fifth topic is Vasuli Mikdash Vishanti Basoicham, built for me a Mikdash, a temple in which I will dwell, man's relationship to God. The previous topic was God's relationship to man, and here man's relationship to God. Nitaba he wanted us to do some of the work. Or um, some would say most of the work, but in any event. Now, the last topic would be I created the earth and I placed man upon it. This is going to discuss the role of mitzvahs. Like, what do mitzvahs do? Right? What's the union of mitzvahs? The word barasi is gematria taryag. Right? That's the word barasi, gematria taryag. That is the 613 mitzvahs. What are they? Why do we need them? And how do they change the world? Okay, let's just go back now. That was all the, those are the six topics in general that we'll be covering. It won't be six lectures, it'll be more than that, uh, because there's a lot of ground to cover. And uh, there'll be questions and answers and uh, discussion and so on and so forth, which is fine.